The Gospel of St. Matthew ends with a great commission that Jesus gives to his disciples. Make disciples of all nations, teaching them all that I have taught you, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and remember that I am with you until the end of the age. This commission that was given to the disciples is given also to us today. We indeed share in the same mission. We are the church, and the social strategy of the Holy Spirit from the very beginning has been to build us together as a community of believers. So this commission is not just ours alone as individuals, but it also applies to all of us as a local diocese and a local church. And this is where Together in Action comes in. This is part of our manifestation of our identity and who we are. Today, there's a new twist that our Holy Father Pope Francis has given us. He's urged us to try and see things from the periphery. Uh, we tend to look at things from our own central vantage point, but he's suggesting that we should go to the periphery, see how things look from the periphery, and attempt to meet the needs of those who are on the margins of our society poor, those who are unaccounted for, those who are ignored, those who simply are forgotten for the most part. When we look at the responsibilities of a diocese and a parish, there are a threefold sense of obligations that we have. One is church, we must be missionary. We must be a people who are not simply looking after ourselves and our own comfort, but we have to reach out and to go to those who have no faith, first of all, to go to those who are weak in their faith, for those who may acknowledge themselves as Catholics, but not practice. And of course, we have to go to the poor. So our parishes and our diocese must be missionary in nature. In addition to that, we must also be catechetical. We have an obligation to try and complete the formation of those who are already disciples and believers, to instruct them, especially in the Word of God, and to enhance our liturgical ministries through the formation of such institutions as the permanent diaconate. So we have a catechetical responsibility. And thirdly, we have a pastoral responsibility. We have to be looking after the lost sheep. Once again, we have to reach out to be mindful of the various manifestations of the poor in our society. For those who are homeless, for those who are in hospice, for those who need and rely upon soup kitchens, we have to be a people with a compassionate heart that reaches out in a pastoral way to all of the sheep. When we put together this picture, of course, we're again talking about together in action. This is part of who we are. This is part of our identity. I would urge all of you at this particular time to be church and to be generous by sharing your own individual resources with those who are on the periphery. the diocesan youth retreat team is an essential resource. I think it's one of the great agents of the new evangelization in the diocese. Uh, young people are ministering to young people, uh, serving in first sacrament retreats, so first Eucharist, uh, first reconciliation and confirmation. The DIRT team goes into schools, goes into parishes, and meets with those kids. And, you know, things like talking about what the sacraments really mean and how they're beneficial to our lives as individuals. I think that DIRT has a really positive impact with younger people. Um, they have the opportunity to see people uh, who are a bit older than them and people that they generally look up to as faith examples. And that's something that I find a lot of youth are missing today. So it's really great to have that lead in their lives. Grant fundings really help us with uh, supplies and creating a fuller team. Uh, so it helps us with more employees so we can have more opportunities to do retreats for the youth, which is really important. And um, with more grants, we have more retreats. And with more retreats, we get to talk to more people. The Medicine Hat Women's Shelter Society has been in operation for over 30 years. We've relied heavily on uh, Catholic Charities and grants to help us run our operations. More specifically, we use the money to operate our Musasa House, which is a supported second stage shelter program. And that's a program where women can live in it for up to a year with their children. They have their own townhouse units and they're able to get back on their feet. And we provide quite intensive case management support to make sure that they can go on to lead successful lives. 
The grant funding that we've received over the years has been used for various things at Musasa House. We've used it for um, to offset salaries for our family support worker, and those workers provide groups to the women every morning, and they provide intensive one-to-one counseling and goal planning with those women, really helping them get back on their feet. I'm I'm thinking of a woman who came to us after eight years of a very uh, traumatic and abusive relationship where she was systematically tortured on a daily basis and wasn't allowed to sleep and um, the children also experienced all of that. The happy part of that story is that uh, eight months later uh, she's bouncing, she walks quickly, she walks with her head up and her shoulders back. Her children are happy, she sleeps. Uh, she's in, engaged in the community, uh, she smiles and laughs, she has a sense of humor that we didn't know about. She says, I found myself. Hospice Calvary, some people say, is a well-kept secret, um, but the fact of the matter is, uh, in the last fiscal year, 2013 to 2014, we supported 2,300 children, teens and adults. We're really the place in Calgary and area for children, teens and families to uh, get support when they're grieving, whether it's because they're facing the life-threatening illness of a family member, a close friend or a death. Quite simply, we would not be able to offer these services if it wasn't for um, organizations and the financial support like the Catholic Charities. The Life and Family Resource Centre is we find resources for people. My motto is we take people where they at. Whenever I receive a call, we take people where they at, not where we think they might be or should be. And then we try to help them. We offer resources in-house that are not offered elsewhere. We try as much as possible to get them to the right place because someone in distress does not want to be uh, going from one telephone number to the next to the next. The name of our organization is Calgary Seniors Resource Society. Calgary Seniors helps prevent uh, isolation uh, and protect seniors from being vulnerable in the community. Uh, the goal of our agency is to keep seniors living independently in their homes for as long as possible. Uh, and we're able to do this through a variety of programs, the Home Share program being one of them. So seniors who might not have family in the city, who are very socially isolated, it, it helps um, them to prevent uh, issues such as fraud, abuse, uh, illness, injury, uh, and makes for a, a much better quality of life. Catholic Family Service has a vision to have vulnerable Calgarians thrive and so a family service agency we want to support people over the life cycle reach their potential. We have 18 different programs, uh, three different areas, counseling, Louise Dean and community. The funding for Together in Action allows us to expand our reach and uh, go into more schools and strengthen those connections. Since 2005, Together in Action has funded our FAST program and has allowed us over the past 20 years to reach over 2,000 families in Calgary. Um, I was at FAST last night and I was talking to a dad and asked him why he would be here with um, his son and how by bringing him to FAST, his son has more confidence, he's uh, improved his social skills and is playing with the other kids and for them as well to be able to come to FAST and meet other parents has just been a wonderful opportunity as they're new to the community.